In this problem, we want to find the electric field vector at the location of this green X due to these two charges, and we're going to assume that both of those charges are positive. The two charges are separated by a distance A, and then this length B is uh, perpendicular to this other length A. The first thing we want to do is sketch the contributions to the electric field from the respective charges. The electric field at the green arrow, at the green X, due to charge 1, will point that way, away from charge 1, uh, because it's positive. Likewise, charge 2 being positive, the electric field due to charge 2 at the location of this green X will point away from charge 2. So we can sketch those in. And we don't know the relative sizes, the relative lengths of those contributions, the relative magnitudes of those contributions, because we don't know how big Q1 is relative to Q2. Uh, so we'll just sketch some arbitrary lengths in there. And we'll call the electric field contribution produced by Q1, we'll call that E1. And we'll call the contribution to the electric field at this green arrow from Q2, we'll call that E2. While we're at it, we might as well also try and sketch in uh, the magnitude and direction of the net electric field at the green X due to those two charges. To do that, we can we take E1 and take this E2, put the tail of E2 to the tip of E1, and this vector right here will be our representation of the net electric field vector uh, due to these two charges at this field point right here. So this vector represents the electric field at this point. Now let's do this quantitatively. Uh, to do that, let's uh, move all this picture over to the right so we have some more room to work. To solve for the electric field analytically, we're going to want to choose a coordinate system. I've choos chosen one right here. I'm taking the x direction to point along the direction from charge 1 to charge 2. I'm taking the y direction to point perpendicular to that and toward the top of the page. It will also be useful to define an angle theta, which I'll write here. There's theta right there. With this coordinate system, let's break, break each of these uh, electric field contributions, E1 and E2, into X and Y components corresponding to these axes. First, let's deal with E2. E2 is entirely in the negative Y direction. So, E2X is equal to 0. E2Y, that is the Y component of E2, is equal to negative E2, where E2 without the arrow represents the magnitude of E2. We can get the magnitude of E2 from Coulomb's law, knowing the charge Q2 and this length B, the distance from Q2 to the field point with the green X. In general, the electric field magnitude due to some charge Q is equal to the electric field constant K, multiplied by the absolute value of the charge Q, divided by the square of the distance that that charge Q is from the field point. So R, that's the distance from Q to the field point, so we've got R squared in the denominator. Applying this formula to uh, the electric field contribution of Q2 at this green X, we have K times the absolute value of Q2, divided by b squared, because b is the distance from q2 to the location where we're interested in knowing the electric field. Now we can do the same to find, uh, to break the electric field due to q1, which we're calling e1, into components. And first we note that the angle that this electric field e1 makes with the x-axis is the same angle theta. So e1 will be broken into an x component and a y component, and this angle theta will be the angle between E1 and the x component. E1x is going to be the magnitude of E1 times the cosine of this angle theta, but the cosine of theta is just adjacent over hypotenuse, or A over C. So E1x 
is E1 times A divided by C, because that's just E1 cosine theta. Likewise, the Y component of E1, well, that'll be the magnitude of E1 times the sine of this angle, because this is opposite to the angle. I need a minus sign to indicate that it's all in the negative Y direction, because everything else in here is positive. And now the sine of theta, well, that's the sine of this thing this angle theta, that's opposite over hypotenuse, or B over C. So the Y component of E1 is minus magnitude E1 B divided by C. And now we need to figure out what the magnitude of E1 is. We just use Coulomb's law again. The magnitude of E1, that is the magnitude of the electric field at this green X due to charge 1, is just the electric field constant K multiplied by the charge, Q1, that's producing the field, divide by the square of the distance from that charge to the location that we're interested in knowing the electric field, namely C. So we got C squared in the denominator. Now let's put it all together. Looking at this net electric field, the X component of this electric field will be the X component of E2, which is just zero, and the x component of E1. Meanwhile, the y component of this net electric field will be the sum of these y components. So let's write that down. That is, the x component of the net electric field is E1x plus E2x. E1x is E1a over c, and E2x is 0. But E1 is KQ1 over C squared, so you substitute that in here, and you get KQ1 absolute values A over C cubed for the X component of the net electric field. Meanwhile, the Y component of the electric field is just the sums of the Y components uh, from charge 1 and charge 2, uh, their fields respectively. E sub 1 Y, uh, that is minus E sub 1 B over C right here. E sub 2 Y was just uh, the negative of the magnitude of E sub 2 which was this value uh, so that goes right here and this with the substitution for E1 goes right there so we have the X and Y components of the net electric field and now we can write the electric field vector so the net X component of the electric field goes right here in front of the I and this net Y component of the electric field goes right here in front of the J and all I've done is substitute in that C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared and I've put that in and used that substitution right here. So this is the net electric field vector uh, at the location of the green X uh, due to charges 1 and 2. Now we could also write this in terms of a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude of this electric field vector, which is just called E without the arrow on it, would just be the square root of the sums of the squares of the components, just like for any vector. Now we can define a direction uh, as this angle here, so this is the direction of the x-axis. We can to find, or find this angle between the net electric field vector and the x-axis, this angle phi, by using the arctangent of the y component absolute value over the x component x absolute value. And let me just illustrate that. We take our net electric field vector, break it into an x component and a y component. Those are just these components uh, we found earlier here and here. So this angle phi, the tangent of that phi will be opposite, that's the y component of the net electric field, uh, over adjacent, that's the x component of the electric field. I have them here in absolute values to guarantee that I'll get a positive angle because I'm just trying to find some positive value for that angle uh, that this electric field is uh, below the x-axis.